Hello, and welcome to the Community IT Innovators Technology Topics Podcast, where we discuss nonprofit technology, cybersecurity, tech project implementation, strategic planning, and nonprofit IT careers. Find us at communityit.com. Thank you for joining Community IT for this podcast, part one. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits. Listen for part two in your podcast feed. Good afternoon and welcome to the November 2021 Community IT Innovators webinar. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on supporting Macs at your nonprofit. Apple's Mac computers, and especially MacBooks and iMacs, remain popular among nonprofit organizations. However, managing Macs effectively in a business environment presents a number of challenges. Today, we're gonna share our insights and lessons learned from our experience of supporting over 600 Mac computers at our nonprofit clients. My name is Johan Hammerstrom. I'm the CEO of Community IT and the moderator for this webinar series. The slides and recording for today's webinar will be available on our website and YouTube channel later this week. If you happen to be watching this recording right now on YouTube, please consider subscribing to our channel to receive automatic updates when we post new webinar recordings. Throughout the webinar, we invite you to use the Q&A panel or chat window to ask questions, and we'll do our best to respond. Now, before we begin, we'd like to tell you a little bit more about our company. Community IT is a 100% employee-owned company. Our team of 40 staff is dedicated to helping nonprofit organizations advance their missions through the effective use of technology. We're technology experts, and we've been consistently named a top 501 managed services provider by Channel Futures, and it's an honor that we received again in 2021. And now, it's my pleasure to welcome our Chief Technology Officer, Matthew Eshelman, and our Director of Technology Solutions, Galen Wenger, and I invite them to introduce themselves. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Johan. It's great to be back here uh, again uh, with another one of our uh, technical topics for a webinar. Really looking forward to the conversation that we're going to have today to talk about how best to support uh, the Mac OS at your nonprofit organization. Uh, if you notice the, the very front first picture uh, in the in the webinar is a picture of our team uh, support, uh, clients and uh, there are Macs in the foreground. And so that's not just uh, window dressing or props. Uh, we actually do uh, support uh, a large number of Mac devices and uh, looking forward to sharing what we've learned and also looking forward to getting some input from, uh, from you. So again, as Johan mentioned, please feel free to chat in any questions that you may have. Uh, and for those of you that submitted questions in advance, I think we'll get to, to most of that during today. So I'm really happy to uh, be joined by my colleague, uh, Galen Wenger, uh, who really helps to drive a lot of this um, platform management here at Community IT. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, today. So um, Director of Technology Solutions here at Community IT. I have been involved in Mac administration since 2007 and have been with Community IT for about 13 years now and have been uh, involved in a push over the past few years to really make our uh, kind of top tier Mac management service and I'm happy to be here to share what we've learned. Great, well, in terms of what we're gonna talk about today, uh, we've already given away a little bit, you know, Mac or PC. Uh, at Community IT, we do support uh, largely a PC environment, but have a significant Mac support presence. Uh, we'll talk about some of the best practices uh, that we've found and developed in terms of how to best manage Mac devices, what policies to include, and then kind of how to approach that. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit about uh, tools and um, administration and, and have a discussion about some of the options that are available there. Uh, so before we kind of launch into it, love to just get a sense for where the audience is at today. So Johan, if you wanna launch our first poll in terms of uh, uh, how familiar uh, you are, with Mac OS use and support. So go ahead and chat that in. We'll leave this open for uh, a moment or two and uh, then share the results with, uh, with all the participants. So 
are you not at all familiar coming to this new? Maybe you're like Galen, you're an expert. Um, maybe you have something to, to share. Or maybe you're you're kind of in the middle. I'd probably put myself in, in the middle. Uh, uh, got, you know, kind of a cursory <laughs> knowledge and understanding, um, but would, 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 be, would be in the middle somewhere. All right, great. Well, looks like uh, of the folks attending today, most of you are quite familiar. So uh, I think that there'll be some takeaways and lessons learned for you. Uh, if you're somewhat familiar, let's uh, I think we'll be able to get you get you up a notch or two. So thanks for uh, thanks for uh, responding to to that. So let's first talk a little bit um, about some of the terminology. So I don't know, Galen, and maybe I can take the first one, uh, but then you can take the rest. But in terms of, you know, I think it's helpful uh, to understand. So, so Apple is the company that make the Mac, the Mac runs Mac OS. Uh, so that's the operating system of Apple computers, which would be separate from the operating system that runs on the iPad and iPhones, which would be um, iOS. That's right. And so, uh, moving along, the M1 is one of the uh, bigger developments the past few years for Macs. So over the past couple of decades, Macs were running on PowerPC processors, and they switched to Intel, and which is the same processor that most Windows computers run. And over the past couple of years, now they've been switching, and really the past year, they've been switching to their own internally designed processor. So you may have heard M1 is the name of the processor. Apple Silicon is a term that gets banded about a lot. Um, and it, it's a great processor, great hardware. We've been very impressed with it here at Community IT. Uh, does really well with power management. So for your laptops, you, that's how you get that really long battery life. Um, it does have some architectural technology changes on the back end that affect how you manage devices as well. So it's definitely in play. Moving along, Apple Business Manager. Um, is a service that Apple has for organizations where you can um, do, you know, manage purchasing and roll your devices in um, through Apple. So they, the device is associated with your organization and not just whatever, you know, whichever user has the device. You can do uh, management of organizational identities to so manage Apple IDs. You can also do uh, managed purchasing of app store apps and content uh, that could be uh, acquiring free apps or paid apps. That you can then distribute to devices, probably through your MDM. So mobile device management is a linchpin uh, for a lot of what we're talking about today. And that's a service that you can use to push down configuration settings and content to devices that allow you to um, manage them support the users on those devices. It is really a kind of essential element of Mac management at this point. Um, you know, over the years, Apple has had a couple different methods for managing Macs, um, but within the past couple of years, it's really become necessary to use an MDM. And that MDM is tightly integrated with the operating system, um, which enables it to, um, uh, manage the device. The last item here, endpoint security framework, this is kind of an internal term that what we've seen in Mac OS for the past few years is a, and from Apple in general, is a strong focus on privacy and security. Um, on the privacy side of things, that means that there are now identified privacy permissions within Mac OS to control things like, can this application access my microphone? Can this application look at my camera? Can this application read files in my downloads folders? These are all various settings that are usually controlled by the user. In an organizational context, we may want to manage those settings for, uh, for our users so that if we deploy, say, a backup application, that that backup application is then actually able to access the data. So that's one aspect of it where your MDM can control those privacy preferences. And then another piece of that, of that would be uh, kernel and system extensions. That's another key necessary feature where if you're deploying security software or maybe uh, file sharing software that's going to interact with the operating system on a low level, Apple has a process that you have to go through to be able to allow that application to run. That process can be somewhat onerous, particularly for the end users. And so that's something that we want to be able to control. And in our experience working with various organizations, 
that's a big part of Mac management is, you know, leveraging control of those endpoint security features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Yeah, and I think, Galen, as you touched on, <clears throat> in terms of the things that are necessary to support Max, I think it, it is a bit of a different support model. So, you know, as a managed services provider, community IT supports, you know, 140 different organizations. We're supporting well over 6,000 nodes, I think, at this point. Um, and in general, the, for the Windows world, uh, we have a very device-centric view, so we can push down things to devices. Um, but in the in the Mac world, it it's not it doesn't work quite that way, um, and it's very much uh, a user-centric model. So yeah, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that um, kind of user-centric model a little little bit more, um, and and just kind of some of the other things that are unique to supporting Macs, particularly from a from a centralized perspective. Absolutely. So you know, on that user-centric model. Thinking about us as um, you know, just uh, individual people, maybe using an iPhone and uh, a Mac. We're signed in with our Apple ID both places. We get our iMessage both places, and that kind of you know user account centric access to the data and some of those features is something that Apple does very well. And I think you know as we translate that into an organizational context, we see that the end user maintains a higher level of control. And kind of, and the you know account access uh, on the Mac side than necessarily what we may be familiar with. We've come up through Windows device management. It's not simply enough just to make sure the device has the applications installed on it and is ready to go. The user is still going to have to be a part of this. Another aspect of that would be providing any level of screen sharing remote support. Apple actually does not allow an organization to pre-approve entirely a remote support application that can access the screen. At the end state, the user is still going to have to approve that within the operating system before we can connect. You know, that's great for privacy, but I know for our help desk at Community IT, it can be challenging, especially if the, the person uh, who needs assistance maybe isn't very familiar with Mac OS, and we have to guide them through that approval process before we can even share the screen and really get to the matter at hand. Uh, another key aspect that maybe also comes from Mac's uh, presence in the consumer world is that Mac isn't really great for enterprise change management or, or maybe the small to mid-sized business change management in terms of letting folks know what's some of the new features that are coming in advance, as well as some of the changes in the operating system that may affect how software works. Apple is well-known, perhaps notorious, for doing these big uh, landmark releases and dropping the changes right on release day in terms of the information that's available, as opposed to providing, you know, better insight months in advance on what those changes are going to be. That can affect things like your endpoint security software, and we've definitely had challenges where there will be a late breaking change in the operating system that requires our endpoint security vendor to make a quick software change that we then need to quickly deploy. And if we don't, there are various negative impacts from performance impacts, maybe the endpoint security agent stops working. Um, we've had to sometimes change well remote support vendors, for example, because they couldn't keep up with the changes within the operating system. And it's a constant drumbeat of changes every six months to a year. It seems like we're adapting to the platform. And so some of these changes on, I you know, I think they're great changes, but it's still, we're constantly learning, constantly adapting. Uh, you know, on the different tool set, Similarly, um, we're seeing that I think it's the rare tool that can do both Windows and Mac administration very well. And, and we've definitely had better success by having a separate tool set. We have on our you know, Windows side, we have various device management and um, enterprise security tools that work really well there. And then we have an entirely separate tool set for Mac. And that Mac tool set is actually probably changing more quickly over time as um, the Mac platform changes and we you know, pick, pick the best of breed tools at that moment. And then the last piece is that, you know, our experience is if we really wanna have a high end end user experience that's helping guide users through things like um, enrollment of their brand new device, uh, operating system upgrades, maybe some, you know, uh, refinement or fine-tuned application deployment. We often find ourselves using uh, the Mac OS scripting languages. So often, uh, for those of you who are familiar with this, often Bash 
maybe a little Python thrown in there. These are different languages than what we use for device uh, management on the Windows side. And I think it can be a little bit of a, a barrier in that even with the best MDM solutions out there, we still find ourselves dropping into doing some you know, light coding to really make everything work together. Yeah, and so I think um, the other thing I think it's it's helpful to um, to realize or understand I think combined with that some of that change management and and Apple's uh, maybe less than proactive communication around changes in the operating system is that uh, you know the current Mac OS uh, is basically N plus two or N minus two depending on how you look at it in terms of you know Apple is going to support the most current operating system. Uh, and then the previous two versions. And so for me, I'm always like reminding myself. Uh, so that is 1015 Catalina, and then there's 11 Big Sur, and then just released, um, which is the, you know, Monterey, which is, has the, the OS designation of 12. So again, it's interesting to see the different naming um, conventions on the, you know, kind of the OS version side, and also to kind of see how Apple is supporting and providing updates to those systems. Um, you know, I think it's, it's important for, for, you know, for folks that are managing, um, managing the devices to keep up to date with those version changes um, in a way that, uh, you know, I think People tend to have a have a view of like, oh, I've got this eight year old you know MacBook and it's great and it still works, um, but if it's not running one of these versions of software, it's not it's likely not getting the most current security updates, and it's possible that Apple you know it, unless you're on the most current version, you know Apple isn't even providing complete security updates for some of the older versions. Uh, so there's an article I'll chat out uh, that came out, uh, I think here in the last week or so that involves some security research uh, about the timing and release of some of those security patches uh, in the Mac o or in the Mac OS. Yeah, that's a great point. And yeah, you know, I just add to that. So one of the challenges on the management side is that Catalina and Big Sur in particular were rather dis disruptive upgrades uh, for us to push out. Um, and there were a lot of changes around those privacy preference controls and around those kernel and system extensions. So those, those security features that um, at least initially broke a lot of software. And so we had to, in some cases, wait for whether it was you know, our endpoint security software or um, or something that one of our clients used had had to wait on the upgrade until it was supported, and so it's a, definitely a balancing act. And, and Apple doesn't help out there by um, the selective patching of the uh, prior release. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now moving into talking specifically about kind of what to manage and what we found um, to be the the most helpful. Um, I'd also love to to pause here as well and get a sense from the attendees in terms of how many Macs are in your organization. So if we can get the poll up, uh, we'll get a sense of, uh, you know, less than 10%, maybe a quarter, maybe a quarter to a half, more than half, or, or all Mac. I think um, maybe anecdotally, and I'll be curious to see where the data comes in, you know, don't let me skew your results, but I think we generally see organizations that are like predominantly Mac. Uh, and then organizations that have, you know, one or two that they need to support. Uh, I think that's generally been um, kind of been what we've observed. I am kind of curious to see if that is shifting. I think we're maybe seeing a little bit of a shift uh, with more organizations um, adopting Max. I think in part due to the, uh, the M1 chip, I think the prices are coming down. Uh, you know, computer shipping logistics is kind of a nightmare <laughs> right now. Uh, and so Apple has seemed to avoid most of that, you know, so we are seeing uh, pretty, pretty quick turnarounds in terms of ship dates. Uh, the cost is pretty, uh, is pretty good, you know, for the MacBook Air, uh, the pricing is not bad compared to kind of comparably equipped uh, Windows computers. Um, and so, uh, you know, so I, I think we may be seeing a shift to more, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. So I'm curious what, uh, what the audience has got here. So we've got... Uh, yeah, kind of that bifurcation there, you're the all Mac or uh, you're supporting those one or two and trying to figure out uh, trying to figure out what to do with some folks in the middle. So that's um, I think that's also uh, interesting here to see the the relation. So uh, at community IT, 
generally speaking, you know, of the devices that we are supporting were largely Windows. So about, you know, almost 90%, uh, with about 11% uh, in the Mac OS uh, realm. And I think this has been uh, maybe, I think, a growing number of, of Mac computers that we're supporting uh, over time. And I think that's led us, as we've gone down the road, to provide kind of the best support and automation for Mac devices, leading us to actually choose a dedicated Mac MDM tool because some of the traditional tools that are used for organizations by organizations like us to support Windows computers, it's just another world to support Macs. And so uh, that um, you know, special attention uh, goes into the support tools as well. So in terms of those special controls, you know, I think Galen, if you could talk a little bit about the things that we like to see deployed or managed or configured as part of that um, Mac support, maybe how that's a little bit different than what we see and do in the in the Windows world. Yeah, absolutely. And so just to, to put a, a finer point on what you're mentioning there, you know, on the Windows side of things for device management, uh, we're still very much in a world where we install a management agent. So just a piece of software that gets installed by administrator or process, and then it's able to take all the various actions on the operating system. And for our tools, that had been the model for Mac as well. And with the changes in the you know, security framework on Mac OS, it's just not a viable option. We can put an agent on there, but it won't be able to do anything unless it's a MDM behind it. And so that managed the mobile device management where you are in the operating system actually, you know, assigning your device to this management server is just, you know, absolutely necessary. It makes all the rest of this possible. So let's talk about the controls that we have. First one is, you know, a one that could have a healthy debate, local admin users. We have, our experience has generally been that, uh, well, Mac OS users are generally uh, a little more self-sufficient than the general population on Windows. I think there's probably a lower risk of unintended actions, be it drive-by malware or installing something you didn't mean to install on Mac than Windows. That's not to say that Mac doesn't have malware, it does. And it's worth having a great endpoint security agent on them as well. Um, but also, you know, uh, in, in a Mac OS environment, you're much less likely to be joined to a directory. So be that, your traditional on-premise Active Directory or similar, or something like Azure AD. There are a couple solutions, third-party solutions that you can use to try to tie in your uh, Mac local device with a cloud directory. But in general, in most cases, you're using local accounts. And our experience has been, it uh, mostly makes sense to uh, use local administrator users. We will use standard user accounts. So the difference there, standard users don't necessarily have to ability to install apps while administrators do. Um, we'll generally do administrator use, users unless there's a overriding concern that really requires a standard user. Um, last item on that, having a local admin end user helps make the uh, updates and upgrades process go a little bit smoother as well. Uh, moving along, file vault recovery key. So first of all, implicit in that, in, you're encrypting your devices with file vault. And so that's applying you know, device level hard drive encryption. So that if the device is taken, those bits are encrypted and can't be accessed as easily. So it's important to have a file vault recovery key set and escrowed into your mobile device management solution. Uh, so one thing that we've seen is Mac has previously supported both a shared recovery key, they called it institutional, as well as a um, a personal recovery key, which is you know one that is uh, individual to the device. And now they're just saying, hey, just one key per device and you need to escrow it into your MDM. So that's an, another important thing. Uh, it's important to have OS level updates and third party updates to make sure that you are, your apps and your operating system stay up to date. Uh, one thing that's been really hard on um, Macs recently is actually managing those updates. Uh, with some of the changes that Apple has made in their platform, the traditional methods that we had to deploy those updates are no longer working. We're hopeful here in macOS Monterey that's coming up, uh, that's already been released and that will hopefully be deploying to our clients in the next few months. We'll be able to have more fine grade control about controlling when exactly updates happen. But for right now, we're actually really have to leverage our end users to uh, get folks on board to install those updates. And then those last two pieces, 
it's really important that we're able to control the uh, privacy preferences to help make sure the apps work for our users, as well as make sure that the various you know, security solutions that we're installing have the approval within um, the kernel and system extensions that they need to run. Yeah, so then in terms of making all that happen, you know, we've talked a lot about MDM and MDM and MDM, and I think that's the key element of that. So MDM is this kind of element that's built into the Mac OS operating system, and then is able to be leveraged by these tools that can register as a mobile device management platform. And so that is different from the traditional agent-based support platform uh, that you know, many organizations have traditionally used. And there's a lot of different tools out there to do this. Uh, you know, if you Google Mac MDM support or Mac management, you're gonna get a lot of different um, options for that. And some of them are really good. Again, if you are, you know, a, managing just the computers in your organization and need kind of lightweight inventory and, and kind of configuration, then, you know, solutions like the, you know, Kanji and, and Mosul are, are geared towards those um, type environments. Uh, you know, the big, the big player is there in the middle. So Jamf, um, you know, having a lot of sophistication and capability and API integration with, um, you know, with other uh, other tools, uh, you know, Okta comes to mind as as being able to integrate some uh, workflow so that your device registration can be passed uh, into, uh, you know, from, from Jamf into Okta. Um, but those are really kind of all Mac management tools. Uh, we've also got Workspace One here. So that's a, a VMware product that actually combines uh, Mac and Windows management into an, a single MDM platform uh, in the same way, you know, Microsoft Intune or Endpoint Manager is also, you know, kind of combines the ability to manage both Mac and Windows devices from a single platform, you know, with the caveat that the Mac management um, just isn't as robust as, uh, you know, as it is in some other platforms. And then we have the solution up top. Uh, which is Adigy, which is built for managed service providers uh, like us that need to have what's called multi-tenancy. So the ability to, to kind of securely manage um, discrete clients so that uh, we can leverage some economies of scale, uh, not have to rewrite things for each individual organization and, and then provide some management. So again, uh, there are a lot of different options for the, you know, for the, for, for Mac management. Um, and you know there may even be more coming. So I think Galen, you were talking about uh, some changes that Apple is making potentially to provide some of these services as well. Thank you for joining Community IT for this podcast, part one. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits. Listen for part two in your podcast feed. Community IT does these free webinars and podcasts for our community, and we love sharing our knowledge and experience. If you have more questions or are having trouble with your IT at your nonprofit, please get in touch with us on our website, www.communityit.com, so we can start a conversation or schedule an assessment. Downloading any of our free resources there will get you signed up for our webinar reminders, and you can attend our next webinar in real time and ask our experts your own questions. If you love podcasts, please subscribe and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits.